Britain has become one of the world's least God-fearing countries. Every year, more and more of us come to the view that God and everything about him, a sense of mystery, intuition, blind faith, is to be rejected in favor of an understanding of the world that is based on the observable and the knowable. It's no surprise when you look around the world that atheism has become so attractive. But at its worst, atheism can be every bit as intolerant as the most devout religious belief. I wonder if it really is the answer to our prayers. If you believe you have God on your side, if you are the chosen ones, any act of barbarism can be justified against your enemies. It's not just Muslims versus the rest either. In Iraq, it's Muslims versus Muslims, Sunni versus Shia. In Northern Ireland, Christian sectarianism is a partial justification for decades of violence. The Zionists of Israel believe they have a God-given right to occupy land Palestinians believe to be theirs. The reciprocal loathing between Jews and Muslims is yet another gift from God, of course. No surprise, then, what the average man or woman in the liberal West makes of religion. What do you think about religion? About religion? Yeah. I think religion causes a lot of problems, really. I think what, what religion's managed to do through history has been to the detriment of freedom and, you know, and I think it holds people back. What do you think about people who say that religion causes a lot of warfare and trouble? It most probably does. Why do you think that is? Well, because you've got one person believing in one thing and one person believing in something else. And they feel, you know, they're passionate about what they believe in. Yeah, I suppose most wars are caused by religion, aren't they? Yeah. All of which is perfectly understandable, I suppose, but is it religion, per se, which is to blame? Or that very stupid human craving for certainty and justification? On the toes of theology. Many atheists reckon it is religion, a belief in the supernatural. The time has come for people of reason to say enough is enough. Religious faith discourages independent thought, it's divisive, and it's dangerous. Richard Dawkins is a brilliant man, a wonderful writer and, lest these days we forget, a fairly decent scientist too. Of late he has become more renowned though as the man who hates God, forever waging war on religion and blaming it for much of the violence in the world. It could be Muslim imams issuing fatwas. I think that the crimes that are done in the name of religion really do follow from religious faith. I don't think anybody ever could or would say that with respect to atheism. And not just Dawkins either. It seems to be de rigueur for card-carrying atheists to say that people who believe in religion are simply conditioned. I do object to people being entrapped by religious belief. And I think that such but people not should be disabused. They're not stupid. Do you think they're more stupid than you are? Well, clearly not. Um, I think they are conditioned more than I am. Some atheists have become rather dogmatic, terribly certain in their conviction that there is no God and that anyone who thinks there is, is a deluded and dangerous fool. And are they right? If we all became atheists tomorrow, would the world suddenly become a better place? Yeah. I doubt it. Not least because atheists are becoming as intransigent about their own views as the people they so despise. Atheism is becoming a religion of its own. It already has its gurus and its revered sacred texts. We will be able to explain everything through science. It has its magnificent temples, within which lie mysteries and unknowable truths. Here is where we uncover the laws of physics, the origin of the universe and its evolution. But of course, atheism too has blood on its hands. 
the Soviet Union's atheist regime killed more than 20 million people. When you think about it, atheism's a rather peculiar thing. Nothing more, really, than a belief in a negative. A further belief, if you like, in disbelief. So it's hard to imagine how such a blank position could show us how to live our lives. And yet that's exactly what some atheists are increasingly attempting to do. And in that attempt, atheism is beginning to take on some of the characteristics of the belief systems they despise. I think, I think the Sorry, Ellen. <laughs> you just said they'll follow whatever rubbish you put in front of them. That their ideas are stupid. The beliefs are stupid. The theology is stupid. Isn't that a tad arrogant? Heartland, USA. A place where the equally intransigent forces of Christianity and atheism square up to one another. Sunday morning outside St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York. David Bedford is such a good atheist he changed his name to Darwin, much as an Islamic convert may change his name to Muhammad. Interested in reading something? Go home, she said. Hello, Hello. Read, sir. Who are you? Can well, I have one of your... I'm the atheist messiah. Are you really? Yes. How wonderful to meet you. Yeah. Tell me a little about what you believe in, why you're, why you're here. What I believe in is, well, uh, my, I don't believe in any gods. And I think uh, believing in things that aren't true affects uh, people's uh, thinking and people's lives. But why it. can't you believe what you believe and let other people believe what they want? Uh, because what they believe is wrong. <laughs> yes, but don't, don't you think that's a tad arrogant? Uh, no. <laughs> no. No. It's a good in, answer. In fact, I don't think that we should tolerate religion at all. It would be unfair, of course, to suggest that atheists are all of that variety. Uh, I think prevalence of religious belief, particularly in the heartland of America, is almost unquestioned. Uh, and in his way, he is doing something <laughs> to make people question that belief, I suppose. So, even atheism's rational way still breeds its own brand of bona fide loonies. But atheism's common ground with religion doesn't stop there. Devout believers can be contemptuous of the views of other religions. Hello. The same can be said of a good few atheists. American Atheists was set up in 1963 with the laudable aim of safeguarding the civil rights of atheists. Welcome to my office. It's President Ellen Johnson shows me around. Thank you. Uh, this is our library, and if you want to come into the stacks, the best room is probably here because there's room. This is our history, so that years from now the Christians can't rewrite atheist history. And what's interesting is that going back to the 1700s, religion was criticized. I, I just did a show on the viewpoint, reading from those books to show people. And this is their history, and it has to be preserved. Cold drinks, everybody, before we do Ellen's invited me to appear on her TV show, The Atheist Viewpoint, which is transmitted on cable in 19 U.S. states, as well as on the Internet. It's uh, 25 minutes. That's fine. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to The Atheist Viewpoint. My name is Ellen Johnson. I'm the president of American Atheists. My guest here today is the award-winning journalist Rod Little. I rather liked Ellen. She was witty, clever, well-read. But underneath, you've got that sulfurous whiff of the true believer. Because uh, it strikes me as odd that atheists should need an organization to pledge the fact that they don't believe something. Well, it's more than just that. We have to work to present, prevent, uh, protect our civil rights and protect the separation of state and church. You in, in Ellen's fight for the separation of state and church seemed wholly commendable. The trouble is, 
She doesn't stop there. I mean, our nation, as you know, Rod, is one of the most religious nations mm. on earth. They've got their, they've got their little logo on our money. They've got their, they've got their, uh, their, their pledge in our pledge that this is one nation under a god. When they get them there, they... it wasn't long before Alan's sensible, rational approach had descended into vilifying religious beliefs. The ordinary Christian will do, for the most part, what the they they will. They're not called followers for nothing. So do you think that's stupid? I would never, ever attack someone, make an ad hominem attack against somebody. It's I think deep. what the <laughs> idea is... Sorry, Alan. You just said they'll follow whatever rubbish you put in front of them. You want to be rude about it? That's being no, rude about it. I'm trying to be it's... polite about it, but what I will say is that their ideas are stupid. The beliefs are stupid. The theology is stupid. And boy, that half an hour goes fast, doesn't it, folks? I want to thank Rod Little for being a guest on the show and his thank crew here for much. being in the studio. Thanks yeah. for watching us on The Atheist Viewpoint. What you get when you talk to some atheists about religion isn't simply a dispassionate argument about the facts. Sooner or later, you'll get a vomiting out of contempt. As if it's not enough that belief in a divine being might be improbable, but that it's actually laughable. It's the same when you speak to a fervent believer, that terrible certitude that he's right and you are wrong. And atheism has its triumphant evangelists, many living right here in the English countryside. We are entering the typical habitat of Britain's fundamentalist atheists. Quiet country lane on the fringes of a cathedral city. Agreeable cottages, privet and leylandy. Uh, Peter Atkins is a professor at Oxford University. He believes God is an unnecessary human creation. I can see that there's an argument for that. Give me your views on the existence or otherwise of God. Well, it's fairly straightforward. There isn't one. There's no evidence for one. No reason to believe that there is one. And so I don't believe that there is one. And I think it's rather foolish of people to think that there is one. Isn't there a terrible arrogance in that certitude? What's wrong with arrogance if you're right? I can't, I don't know that I mean, it's not quite sartorially your style. But For Richard Dawkins, being an atheist means replacing irrational, faith-based understanding with science and the scientific method. Uh, very nice. The science has standards of peer review, standards of testing, things have to be verified. It's not enough for somebody to say, um, I believe that so-and-so, or it feels good to me. You wouldn't take very seriously a scientist who said an asteroid hit the earth because I just feel that way or it has been privately revealed to me that an asteroid hit the earth the atheist would argue that the scientific method gives us all we need in order to make sense of the world and that science with its rational explanations based upon observable evidence isn't really a superior tool for understanding but the only tool. In other words, it is the way, the truth and the light. Now, does that sound familiar? The problem for atheists is that science may not be as far away from religion as you might imagine. This is the Fermilab in Batavia, Illinois, a beautiful early 1970s temple to science. Its job is to tell us how the universe began, although like the Latin or Greek of early religious texts, not in a language many would understand. Rocky Kolb is one of their elders, a man at the top of his profession who knows more about the origin of the universe than almost anyone else. So the, these are all the controls for the linear accelerator. 
Fermilab contains the most powerful particle accelerator in the world. Inside it, particles are smashed together at velocities close to the speed of light to try to replicate the moment when the universe came into being. This is science at its most magnificent and exalted. It is uh, 6.28 kilometers in circumference. And matter and antimatter collide at two places around the ring. When they collide, they produce the same conditions we believe were present a millionth of a millionth of a second after the bang. After the bang. After the bang. And we recreate the conditions as close to the time of the bang as we can do. Using the results of when asked what happened after the Big Bang, Rocky could tell me down to the minutest detail. But of course, when it came to what happened before, he ran into trouble. It's also interesting that your ambition at the moment cannot reach beyond that 100 millionth of a second after the Big Bang. You can't go before there. Why can't you? Oh, well, we can certainly speculate about what happened before that. But it's speculation, informed scientific speculation, but speculation. It is informed scientific speculation, that's correct. Does any of what you've discovered actually preclude the existence of a creator? No, there's nothing to preclude it, and yet there's nothing that suggests the necessity of it. Which option you take then, God or no God, is a matter of choosing something for which there is no scientific proof either way. And it will be out of Sir John Polkinghorne is one of the great theoretical physicists of the 20th century. He's now retired from science and is an Anglican priest. In, in that respect. He believes that God stands apart from physics. I don't think that the God is scientifically knowable, or the non-existence of God would be scientifically knowable. I think that the character of the world is supportive of the idea that there is a divine mind and purpose behind it, but I don't think it, I don't think it can be amount to, to proof that that's so. I think that none of us have access to knock down proofs of that, that character, whether we're theists or whether we're atheists. What do you say to pretty eminent scientists who have a belief in God? That they're wrong. First of all, well, you don't. Uh, again, let, let, let's go back. You don't actually think that, do you? Because you cannot. Well, quite, I think they're wrong. You cannot quite I can think that. You can think that. And yes. You might ask, what is the psychology behind my thinking that? <laughs> that is an interesting meta question, and so on. But um, it's wrong. It's a, if, if you like, it's a sadness that clearly the reason that these very eminent people, some of whom no doubt you've been been talking to. Um, uh, are any half scientists really? Some atheists argue that scientists who believe in God are guilty of dualism. That is, they understand the world in two different contradictory ways one which is scientific and rational, the other of which is intuitive and involves a belief in the supernatural. But I don't see that as a contradiction. In fact, that balance strikes me as being at the very essence of what it is to be human cannot live by cold logic alone. Cold logic and science can't actually disprove God, but fervent tastes nevertheless feel their position is the only rational one. I don't think you can disprove God, as you can't disprove fairies and unicorns. And so I suppose it is right that it's a kind of scientific purism that makes me say, I can't disprove God, therefore I, I can't be an absolute 100% atheist. I mean, I, I treat God as the same as fairies and unicorns. But you are 100% really, aren't you? I'm the same as I am with fairies. <laughs>